Alrighty, today we're doing 4.2. 4.2 is special triangles combined with the unit function. We're going to stay in quadrant one today. So the first thing we need to do is review our special triangles from geometry so uh, and Algebra 2 actually. So let's take a look at those. There's two types of special triangles. The first one we'll look at is a 30, 60, 90. And if we uh, convert that to radians, just remember that 30 is pi over 6. 60 is pi over 3, and 90 is pi over 2. So if you want, you can go ahead and uh, get out your unit circle worksheet from yesterday just to see that, but you don't have to. Uh, so if we were to draw this, if we start with an inner angle of 30 degrees or pi over 6, that would be this one right here, approximately 30 degrees because this is 90 degrees and 90 divided by 3 is 30, so I'm cutting this first quadrant into three equal pieces. And we know that if this is 30 and this is a right triangle, then this is 60. And the cool thing about math is opposite 30 degrees is this will always be one half. And this will be root 3 over 2, and the um, hypotenuse is 1. So for pre-calculus and Algebra 2 honors, we always make our hypotenuse 1. If you took um, college prep Algebra 2, or if you remember from um, geometry, you had similar ratios, uh, but we are not using those exact ratios. We are, we just always want to make sure our hypotenuse is one because we're on the unit circle, which is like if this was a point and then we had the circle drawn around it, then we would want the hypotenuse to be one so that the radius is one. The other type of triangle that we can get from a 30, 60, 90 is if we have that 60 degree one. So that means that this angle that's with the x-axis is 60 degrees. And then the angle appears 30 degrees, and again, we have our right triangle. Now these ratios, hypotenuse, great thing, still 1. Opposite 60, though, we have to make sure we get that root 3 over 2. And opposite the 30, we have 1 half. So students use a variety of methods to help memorize these. You have to know these ratios. And the ratio is smallest side is 1 half. Medium side is 3 over 2, and the largest side is always 1. So this is going to be opposite the 30 degree angle, opposite the 60 degree angle, opposite the 90 degree angle always. And so like I said, to uh, since we use these so often, you need to memorize them, but 60 degrees. Um, sometimes students memorize 3 times 2 is 6, and then... Uh, 30 degrees, 1 plus 2 is 3. I don't know if that works for you, but there's a trick you can try if you're having trouble memorizing these. So then our second uh, special triangle is the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, which is somewhat easier because we have two sides that are going to be opposite these two angles, and they're the exact same angle, so their side lengths will be the same. So remember that 45 degrees is pi over 4, and that 90 is pi over 2. So this is the radiant measure. So we only have to draw one triangle for this. 45 degree angle, if this is 90 degrees, 45 is right in between there. So then you end up, like I said, hypotenuse is always 1. But then opposite that 45 degree angle is going to be root 2 over 2. We know this is 90, but since this is 45, this is 90, this has to be 45 since the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. So since these are both the same angles, their sides are going to be the same. So that means that you need to memorize 
these ratios as well for 45, 45, 90. So opposite 45 is root 2 over 2. Opposite the other 45, same thing, math is cool like that. And then the hypotenuse is 1. So those are the ratios we're going to be using for a good portion of the class. So make sure you know those. That means go put them on flashcards tonight and memorize them. I cannot stress enough how much we use those. And if you don't know those ratios, um, you cannot be successful uh, because you will be getting every question wrong that involves these. And there's a lot of questions from now through chapter four, through chapter five, and through chapter six. So make sure that you got those down. Um, the other thing we're going to be revisiting today is the six trig trigonometric functions. So um, six trig functions, and we're going to start with what you already know, which is what you learned in geometry, and probably algebra two as well. So these will look uh, familiar to you. So I'm just going to make a note that this was your geometry way. And I will say that in most cases, this uh, this way of learning it will uh, work for you, but not in all cases. So we do expand on this to do the exact same six trig functions, um, but we will also be doing those uh, the pre-cal way. So I strongly encourage you just to make the transition from your geometry way to the pre-cal way because it makes sense later on too when we do it the pre-cal way and it's pretty cool. So I suggest you do that. So six trig functions, uh, sine of theta. So this is sine, cosine, and tangent. So some of you learned um, Chief Sokotoa when you were memorizing these. So the way that works is if I have a triangle, uh, this is the hypotenuse. And if this is the angle I'm mentioning in my trig function, then opposite would be here and adjacent would be here. So sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Quick pause just for a second to say um, you always need something next to the sine, so it's the sine of an angle, so you can't just write sine equals and not have a value there or a variable uh, because it wouldn't make sense mathematically, and we're really working on our notation in proper form, so make sure you have that. The other side to this is the reciprocal function. So remember, reciprocal means you flip. So for sine's reciprocal is cosecant. So that would just be hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine's reciprocal is secant. And that would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent's reciprocal is cotangent, which is adjacent over opposite. Now, tangent and cotangent are really easy to memorize, but it gets a little bit trickier with sine and cosine. So what I would say is since we go to Steel Canyon and our letters are SC, you always have one SC in every grouping, um, and that way you can remember who goes with who. So if you put sine and secant together, that wouldn't work because that would be S and S. So um, one S and C in per pairing. Okay, so now let's translate, translate this over into the pre-cal way of doing things. So instead of uh, doing hypotenuse and adjacent and opposite, we're going to take this to the unit circle, and it's going to look very familiar and similar, but instead of calling this the hypotenuse, we are going to call this the radius. That makes sense because, again, we're hypothetically assuming that this is some point on the unit circle um, with some given angle right here. So instead of doing opposite and putting an O right here, because this is a height, we're going to call this Y. How much did I go in the Y direction? So like I said, if this was a point, this would have the coordinates x, so this is the horizontal distance, and then the point y. So now we can do the exact same thing that we did over on the left side that we learned from geometry, but with a new triangle. So sine of the angle, again, making sure we have the variable there, and they're going to change that variable up on you. They can call it x, they're going to call it a bunch of different Greek letters even, um, but just know it represents an angle. And sine, before, over here, we did opposite over hypotenuse. So when we translate to this, it's going to be y over r. And then cosine of the angle 
is going to be x over r because it's adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent of the angle is going to be y over x. So those are the regular trig functions. Now let's do the reciprocals and all we have to do with those reciprocals is flip the fraction which is why I get to be cheesy and call it the reciprocal. Um, and we're just switching these again. Same setup, same everything as what we had right there. Okay, so these are the other ones you need to memorize. So you have the stuff up above that you need to memorize and be able to apply as well. So uh, make sure that you get those memorized and these memorized. Obviously for tonight's homework you're going to be referencing, but after that you shouldn't need to refer back to these notes. That's how important they are. That's how much they need to be in your brain. So make sure you know those. So what we're going to do now is we're going to combine the two. We're going to do special triangles and the trig functions. So the way that we are going to do this is it's going to be called evaluating. So um, example one, we need to evaluate. So in order to do this, I'm going to give you guys some steps. So here's the steps to evaluating trig functions. Uh, step one is to draw the angle. So we practiced that in 4.1, how to draw angles. Now all of these problems are going to be rigged if you're not allowed to use a calculator, and they're going to be variations of 30, 60, 90. Today, since we're staying in quadrant one and maybe doing some quadrantals, it's going to be pretty easy, and then we're going to expand to the rest of the unit circle tomorrow. So step two, you are going to make a triangle with the x-axis. So in trigonometry, we almost always make our triangle with the x-axis, so be aware of that. Step three, you are going to label your triangle and or point, if you want to do the point instead of just the triangle, or if you want to do both, that's fine, with the special ratios. So those are the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. And then step four is to actually use the trig ratio. So you're going to evaluate using the appropriate trig ratio. And the problem will tell you which one. OK, so let's go ahead and see some of these examples. So first one, example A, is the sine of 45 degrees. And you're like, okay, cool, sine of 45 degrees. I have to be able to graph it and know what sine is. So first thing I'm going to do is graph my angle. So I'm making an XY grid because we use this a lot, but I'm not labeling it per se um, with uh, hash marks. So I'm just going to draw it like this, and then I'm going to do 45 degrees, which is right here. So here is the angle I'm drawing. There's the 45 degree angle. It came up like this because it's positive. I'm going to make a triangle with the x-axis. So I'm going to take the end of this right here and drop it down to the x-axis, creating a 45 degree triangle. This means the hypotenuse is 1, because we always do that, or the radius, if you want to think of it like that. Opposite 45 is root 2 over 2 and opposite the other 45 is root 2 over 2. So I'm labeling my triangle. If you want, you can even think of it like this, as a point. So the reason why we think of it as a point is sometimes they give it to us in point form. So we want to be able to go back and forth and reverse the order in which we do things and be able to be comfortable with the variations that we're going to see. So y over r is the trig ratio for sine. So now I'm going to take my y value, so you can either take the height of your triangle or the y value of your point. They are the same thing and they should be, but you need to know that. And then I'm going to take my radius, and my radius is 1. So the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. If you plug this into your calculator, you're obviously going to get a decimal because this is an irrational number. But uh, you can check it out. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode instead of radians. We'll go over that a little bit later. Okay. 
Part B. So for part B, we are going to switch it up a little bit and do the cosine of pi over 3. So that means that we're switching to radians. So cosine of pi over 3. Again, you really need to be able to graph your angles. And so if that's not something that's comfortable to you yet, you got to make it comfortable by practicing it more. So pi over 3, remember that this is pi over here. And another way we could write that is 3 out of 3 pi. That simplifies to pi. Why I want to do this is because I actually have 1 pi over 3. So what that means is I need to cut from here all the way over to here into 3 equal pieces. And since this is 1 pi over 3, um, I'm going to be at the first one. So it's right there. And you can see if I do this. There's one piece, two piece, three piece. So that's three out of three. Now if you recall, pi over three is a 60 degree angle. So you can either write pi over three or leave it as 60. Opposite 60 is root three over two. Opposite that 30 degree, which is gonna be up there, is one half. And then the hypotenuse is always one. So what I'm gonna do is now label my x and my y point just so that I'm familiar with it, x direction versus y direction, and now I have to do cosine. Looking at Sokotoa or looking at our pre-cal way of doing this, cosine goes with x. So what you're going to start to pick up on as you do these is that sine is always y over r, so sine goes with the y value and cosine goes with the x value. If you're on the unit circle, it's always that way because if you're on the unit circle, then your radius is 1. So my x value is 1 half, my r value is 1, so 1 half divided by 1 is 1. So if you switch your calculator to radian mode and type in the cosine of pi over 3, it should come out with 0.5. Okay, let's do one more like that before we move on. So we're going to do the cotangent of pi over 6. Now I just want to point out in your calculator, the cotangent is not the same thing as tangent inverse. That is something different. So if you wanted to plug this into your calculator, you would do 1 divided by the tangent of pi over 6 because this is a reciprocal, not an inverse. There's a difference here. So cotangent of pi over 6. Again, pi over 6, um, if you're not sure where that's at, this is 6 pi over 6. So you're going to be dividing this into 6 equal pieces, and then you have 1. So I started by dividing it into 3, and then I cut those in half to give me 6 so that I can get a pretty accurate drawing. Some of you are also getting to the point where you can just memorize that pi over 6 is 30, and since our brain is more familiar with angles, 30 degrees is super easy to graph. So opposite 30 is 1 half. Uh, this would be a 60 degree angle. This would be root 3 over 2, and the hypotenuse is always 1. So what we're going to do now is cotangent is x over y. So remember that uh, tangent is y over x, so we're going to do x over y. So x, I'm going to label my points just to be consistent with the other problem here. So this is the point at the end of the triangle right there. So we get x is root 3 over 2, and y is 1 half. And we're familiar with fractions within fractions. We know what we need to do is copy dot flip. So that's what I'm going to do. We always copy uh, the first fraction and then flip the second fraction, which is nice in this case because the twos are common factors, so we can reduce them, and then we just end up with root 3. Alrighty, so now we're ready to move on to a tricky tricky. Um, we are going to now use the unit circle and we are going to be working on quadrantal angles. And so the best way to do that is with an example. So I'm just going to start with quadrantal. Quadrantal angles. Uh, these are angles that end up on the axes.
and you can't make triangles with these ones. So, so angles that end up on the x or y axis. No triangles. But really cool thing is we can still evaluate them. So I'm going to put tricky tricky because if there's something kids miss on the test, it's these easy quadrantals and all uh, they are missing is they just forgot to look this example over because once you see it, you'll be like, oh, that's not bad at all. So example two is going to be evaluate the trig functions. of quadrantal angles. So first one we have that we're going to do, I'm sorry, so you can see it, it's got a nice zoom. Um, first one you're going to do is cosine of 180. So same thing, we're going to draw our angle. So we go, okay, 180, 0, 90, 180. Uh-oh, it ends up right there. So what we do is we're going to label this point on the unit circle. So remember, we said the radius is already always 1 if you're on the unit circle. So if this is my unit circle right here. Obviously, when I'm doing my triangles, like a 30, this would be 1. But when I'm not on the triangle, this is a radius of 1, this is a radius of 1, this one has a radius of 1, and this one has a radius of 1. But they're not all the same points on a graph. So what would this point be? Well, I went over 1 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction. And then this point up here, I went over 0 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, then I went negative 1, 0, and then this one would be 0, negative 1. Just plotting points on a graph here. So now we go to cosine. If you try and do Sokotoa here, it's not going to work. You need to know that cosine is x over r. So when I do x, my x coordinate of 180 degrees is negative 1. And my y coordinate, which I don't need, I actually need r. What's my radius of the unit circle? It's always 1. So negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. So if you type into your calculator cosine of 180 degrees, it'll tell you negative 1. Alrighty, moving on. Let's try the sine of 3 pi over 2. So now we are going to radians. So 3 pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2. So here was uh, a half and then 2. So 3 pi over 2 is going to be down here. And this point never changes. It's always 0, negative 1. And then sine is y over r. The y value of that point is negative 1. On the unit circle, the radius is always 1. So that's negative 1. And we get negative 1 again. Okay, part C, example C. We are going to move on to tangent. And this is the tangent of negative 270 degrees. So negative angles we go clockwise so negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 I end up right there that point doesn't change just like the last one it's always 0 1 tangent is y over x so my y value of that point is 1 my x value is 0 you are not allowed to divide by 0 in math so we get undefined Alrighty, so that was quadrantal angles, and now I would give you a group challenge, which I'm going to make it a group challenge, so we would pause and um, try this on your own. If you are watching this in your groups, which you probably aren't because you're probably at home, um, then try this on your own. Any group challenge is always good for you. You know they turn up to be uh, similar to test problems. So the tan two tangent pi over four plus cosecant pi over six. 
So this is just like order of operations that you've been doing all along, except for we're throwing a new operation in there. Tangent and cosecant are just mathematical operations, just like a logarithm, just like a square root, just like parentheses, just like adding. So you just have to break it down piece by piece. So I always draw the angle. Pi over 4 is right here. Again, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, and this is pi over here. And there's 4 pi over, whoa, 4 pi over 4, not over pi. So that means that's a 45 degree angle. So root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1. Tangent of pi over 4. So that would be y over x, which is super cool because y and x in a 45 degree triangle are the same thing. So I get 1. So this whole thing up here simplifies to 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus, and then we need to figure this out, cosecant of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is right here going to be a 30 degree angle. Label it with your special triangles. You might think, wow, you're going fast. Yeah, you have to memorize those. It'll, you'll go fast too once you memorize them. Cosecant is sine's reciprocal. Sine goes with y. It doesn't change. So since it's the reciprocal, it's going to be r over y. And that is going to give me r1, y, 1 half, Copy dot flip. So that gives me 2. So I get 2 plus 2, which is 4. So that tricky, tricky simplified to 4. Alrighty, moving on to example 4. We're going to squeeze it right here. So this is where they like to ask you for things a little bit backwards, but we're, we're cool. We can take care of this. It says, given that the sine of t equals one half and the cosine of t equals root three over two, find the other four trig functions. of t. So a couple of things I want to point out here. First of all, they're using t as your angle instead of theta. Fine, don't be tricked by it. Second thing is they're not asking us for what is the angle. They're just asking us to find the other trig functions. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to use our knowledge about special triangles. So Sine of t is 1 half. That's like 1 half over 1 if I was on the unit circle, which means my y value is 1 half. Cosine of t means root 3 over 2 over 1, and cosine always goes with x, so this is going to be root 3 over 2, and this is 1. So this, the four other trig functions I don't know. First, I don't know tangent t. So tangent is going to be the y over x ratio. So that's going to be 1 half over root 3 over 2. And then I'm going to copy dot flip that. So I get 2 over root 3. The 2's reduce, but I end up with 1 over root 3. So I need to rationalize. So times root 3 times root 3, so I get root 3 over 3. So there's that one. That one's probably going to take the most work. Now let's go to cosecant t, which is r over y. Cool thing. What was the sine of t? Sine of t was 1 half. Guess what? Cosecant of t is that reciprocal, so it's just going to be 2. Then we're going to go to the secant of t, and secant of t is going to be r over x, which means we can just take cosecant t and flip it, so it's 2 over root 3, but now we have an irrational number in our denominator, 
So we are going to rationalize and we get 2 root 3 over 3. And then the last one we have to do is cotangent t, which I'm going to go back up here to cotangent, since tangent is uh, y over x, cotangent is x over y. And I'm going to go right here because I already copied that flip and I got 1 over root 3. So I can take this and do the reciprocal and get root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. If that was a little tricky for you, then just do the math of root 3 over 2 over 1 half, which is flipping this fraction, and you'll see that. Okay, last thing for today is a reference angle. So we are going to do that real quick. Um, the reference angle... is going to prepare us for tomorrow. So we're taking um, some time today to prep us for that. So the reference angle of an angle theta is the positive. So that's a first uh, piece that we're going to double underline there because it's super important that you realize no matter what, reference angles are positives. Acute, so from geometry, if you don't remember, acute angle is a cute little angle. It's less than 90 degrees, or pi over 2 if we're in radians. And um, the name of our reference angle, which is super weird, they just call it theta prime. So you just uh, put the little apostrophe on that. And the reference angle is named as the angle that you form with the x-axis. So the math way of saying that is by, um, formed by the terminal side. That's just your angle. Where your angle ends up and the x-axis. So we'll do a couple of those. Um, I'm going to just adjust this real quick. The reference angle of an angle is the positive acute angle theta prime. So just so you know, that's read as theta prime formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Don't be confused by terminal side of theta. That just means like where you're ending up. So your 60 degree angle ends up at 60 degrees. All right. So example five says find the reference angle. For each angle given. So find the reference angle for each angle given. We'll do three of these and then we're done. So example A is 110 degrees. Notice we're not doing sine, cosine, or tangent just yet. All we're doing is practicing finding the reference angle. So to find the reference angle, you're going to graph your angle, so 110 degrees, so 90, and then you're going 20 past 90, which isn't quite a third of the way. So we're going 90 and then a little bit. So this right here, this little angle is 20 degrees. So I'm going to make my triangle with the x-axis. Here is my reference angle, right in there. So if this was 20 and the total is 90, what is theta prime? theta prime is 70 degrees. So again, this is the angle that's always going to the x-axis. Okay, part B. Let's convert this into a radian practice problem. So 7 pi over 4. My suggestion, when you have improper fractions, convert them to mixed numbers. So that's 1 and 3 fourths of pi. Again, I don't want you switching to degrees to be able to do this problem. In the math world, we use radians more than we use degrees, but degrees are easier, so that's what we start you off with. You have to progress, and you can do it. So this is 4 pi over 4, so I go 
that's four out of four, and then five, six, seven. So here's my angle right here. That's the terminal side. I'm going to connect it to the x-axis. I can't say that enough. You're always going to be drawing a line up or down. It's uh, never going to go to the y-axis. So this is what angle right here. So if you already went one and three-fourths of the way, how much do you need to get back? That is going to be pi over four. So hopefully you can see that because here I just want to show you one fourth, two fourth, three fourth. What does that leave that to be? Just one fourth. Last one, negative 14 pi over three. Kind of a big angle, but we're okay. We'll be fine. So first thing, uh, three goes into 14 four times with two left over. So negative four and two thirds pi. So you're like, how the heck do I graph that? It's okay. We're gonna go like this. This is negative one pi, negative two pi, negative three pi, negative four pi, and two thirds. So this is three pi over three. So I'm gonna come to here. So there's my angle. What is this angle right here? That's gonna be pi over three because that's what I need to get back to the x-axis. Notice on this last problem here, this is not a negative angle. We do not have negative reference angles. We double underline that up in the definition. They're always positive. Okay, so for tonight's homework, you guys have a worksheet. And then uh, the other thing that I want you to do is on the back of one of your unit circle ones, let's put it on the back of the 45, 45, 91. We have this stuff right here. What I want you guys to do, 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Uh, and, and then we're going to put our radian measures in there as well. I want you guys to fill this out. So sine is going to be y over r. So if you want to draw your little triangle, or uh, in this case over here, there is no triangle. This is a point, one, zero, because it's a quadrantal. And you're going to do y over r, which is going to be 0 over 1, because the radius is always 1 on the unit circle, and we get 0. Cosine is x over r, so you're going to do uh, 1, because that x coordinate is 1, over a radius of 1, which is 1. Tangent is y over x, so you're going to do 0 over 1, which equals 0, and then you're going to do all the reciprocals. And I only want you to do it for these angles, so again, I think it might be a good idea to have these labeled out here, because it's going to make your life easier. So the sine of 30 degrees is going to be y over r, 1 half over 1, which equals 1 half. Okay? And you're going to fill that out. So in addition to your 4.2 worksheet, you're going to fill that out. Just those five angles. All right. See you later.